Okay, so the second exercise is for your lower trap part of the scapular humeral rhythm. The first one was generating a little bit more serratus than anything else. This is going to go for a little more lower trap than anything else because we need those two. Both are going to work up a trap. We don't have to worry too much about that because we're going to work on that during those two minutes. We want to focus on your lower trap and your serratus because those are the ones that are more weak than anything else. Um, what you'll need is something like a band. Okay, it can be a wide theraband, it can be a tube theraband like this. Make sure you don't go too heavy on the band. Okay, The resistance is there for stimulation and trying to activate. It's not there for a massive amount of load which you're going to struggle with. All right, Same like the wall, we're just pushing in gently, we're not maxing it out. So don't overcook it with a too heavy a band. Better to go for a lighter band, maybe a red or maybe even a yellow. Tie it around something that's not going to move. Um, in the gym, it could be a pole at home, it could be a sofa, something like that. You'll also need something like a slidey disc like this. All right? This on the floor is really helpful. If you're on floorboards, you could use a towel on floorboard, that would work. Here we're in the gym, if you're on gym matting, a slidey disc is really helpful. Now, what you're gonna do is have this as a bit of resistance and your hand on that, and you're gonna lie on your front. We tried doing this in standing, and it was far too much demand on the upper trap and the rotator cuff, okay? There's just no point in that. So don't try and do it standing, just do it lying down. When you're doing it lying down, what you've got to take into account is where your body is relative to the band and the pole. I don't want you in line with the band like this because then there's no load on your lower trap at that point when you're at the top, okay? So I want you on an angle, so when you're out here, there's a line of pull, and if I can get my angle right, there's a line of pull there which will actually fire me up in my, upper, in my lower trap. So I'm going to go through this abduction range. Now, if I'm in that position, there's load all the way through that range. When I'm on that sort of angle, if I'm here, there's way less load at that point for my, for my shoulder blade. So I would be there, okay? And what you're going to do is put a little bit of pressure down because you want a little bit of stress. I'd put your forehead on your hand. I'll, I'll have my head up so I can show you this. But from there, you want to have a straight elbow, a little bit of pressure down through the band. At this point, you've got to think, okay, where's my shoulder blade got to be? I don't want it forward in that wing slump position. I want to then think about the scoop type movement. If you have to come to 90 degrees to do that, that's fine. You can sort of go, okay, I want to be there. Try and keep that position. Go back down to the start and then work on trying to keep that position to there and then think about my shoulder blade's got to move as I move my hand and then try and rotate and lift your shoulder to up around your ear as that's up like that. Now that's going to give you my work rate down here. And then when I come down, you've got to control it. So a bit of weight through the slider, and you're trying to resist that load pulling me back. So I'm resisting that load, and if you think about how that shoulder blade is rotating down like this, my lower trap is trying to contract to stop that going whoop like that. Okay, so the band is trying to pull me down, all right? And if you look at really bad patterning of shoulder blades, when you rotate down, the shoulder just goes poof and crashes. That's a loss of your lower trap and a loss of your stratus. So you're working both here, but the bias or the load here is on my lower trap, trying to slow me down, okay? So the lower trap's working this way, trying to control my movement. So when you get to here, You've got to think, my shoulder base should not be there. It should be there. And then you've got to try and keep in that position and lower your hand down to that position there. Now, if you want to get some feedback, hand on here. See if you can get your hand around that position. It's rather difficult, but if you can do it, you'll get even more feedback. But let's just recap on that. Think about where you're going to start. Shoulder blade scoop to there, bit of pressure down through the, through the slider. Lift that up in a full abduction position. Try and keep that position. And then lift up into here. And by the time I get to that point, my shoulder blade is rotated up to there. And you're reaching forward. Then when you come down, and you go out like that, you've got to think about my shoulder blade has to come down. So that part is coming down towards the midline. When I get to here, I don't want to be there. I want to keep that position like that. Keep it there and then slowly lower that to the floor, keeping some pressure down through here. Again, 
repetition upon repetition upon repetition is going to perfect this. You do this correctly enough, you're going to feel all those muscles around you. You're going to feel like, oh, I feel like in the back of my shoulder. That's your lower trap working. Okay? You're going to feel muscles that are switching on. feels like your lap. That's your serratus working, okay, deep under there. So when you're standing after this sort of thing, you'll feel like your shoulder is probably sitting in a nicer position. It's probably suspended a little more because those muscles are turned on. And they're the muscles that control the shoulder blade, keep it suspended, and flatten it and stop your winging. So if you feel like, you know, once you do these sort of exercises, and you go, God, that's sort of sitting suspended like that, instead of slumped forward, you're doing the right thing. Now these are hard, and they are for people who are past that sort of just activation phase and real strengthening phase for serratus or lower trap. They're into that pattern of movement phase where they don't have any impingement, okay? So you don't have any jamming up there, but you're still winging as you go through or the movement pattern's not the same as the other side. They're difficult, but they're worth their weight in gold. Give that a crack. See you next time.